Now, Sugar Crinkles, the sugar rice treat that's just right sweet, is proud to present Gunsmoke. City and in the territory on west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Say, if there ever was a cereal designed to boost a family's breakfast morale, it's new sugar crinkles. Why, that sugar rice treat that's just right sweet makes breakfast more fun than a circus. Come breakfast time, just pour on milk and you've got a breakfast main dish as you like it. Those golden nuggets of sugar-coated rice we call sugar crinkles are really special. Not too sweet, the way some sugar-coated cereals seem to be, and not like others that don't seem sweet enough. Sugar crinkles really are the sugar rice treat that's just right sweet. And whether you eat them from the bowl for breakfast, from the pack as a snack, or both ways, you love sugar crinkles. Try them soon. And now, Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. mail, Mr. Dillon. Oh? That looks like official stuff, Chester. Yes, it is. All for you. Every bit of it. <laughs> Were you expecting a letter? Oh, no, sir. If I ever got a letter, it'd just mean trouble of some kind. Well, that's what my mail usually means. Yeah, not this time, though. No new wanted notices? Yeah, not a one. Looks like all the bad men have had a change of heart. Mm, sure does. There hasn't been a reward posted for anybody in over a month. Well, not that we know of, anyway. Mm. Uh, Mr. Dillon? Hmm? I think I'll go see if there's any beer left over at the Alfreganza. You join me? <laughs> no, thanks, Chester. Okay, sir. I'll see you later. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Hey, mister. Well, hello. Tell me, is it all right to tie my horse here? Well, of course it is. Well, some towns they don't like strangers being too bold. Well, there's mostly strangers in Dodge. It's a pretty big town. Heard a lot about Dodge. Good or bad? Bad, mostly. No offense to you, mister. Well, I don't own Dodge. <laughs> I'll, uh... Buy you a beer. Well, I, I was just going into the Alfreganza here. You know, a fellow feels funny when he don't know nobody in the place. Oh, I've been that way many a time. Uh, where are you from, anyway? Colorado Territory. A lot of country out there. Sure is. Bartender? Wait a minute. Sure. Hello, Chester. Hello, Sam. Now, what'll it be, stranger? We'd like two beers, please. You must be buying. Yeah, I am. Why? Well, you don't look like you got any more than the price of two beers on you. Oh, don't mind Sam, mister. He gets spells like this. That's all right. It's all right, he says. And if it wasn't all right... Oh, leave him alone, Well, Sam, I hate these gracious. saddle bums that ride a hundred miles to a fine saloon and then order a glass of beer. One thing I'll say for the Texans, they may cause a little trouble now and then, but they drink right. 
Well, I don't take whiskey myself, but I'll buy you one, mister. Oh, beer's good enough for me. Sam, you stay up too late nights. It sours you. It sour anybody. Waiting on a lot of riffraff. Hey, Sam. Sam, you better take it easy how you call this fella. I had, huh? You sure had. You know who this is? What do I care who he is? You're Lou Medellin, ain't you, mister? Lou Medellin? Why, sure it is. I seen him three months ago over to Colorado, to La Hunter. He was right across the street, and he just shot two men. Fastest thing ever happened. I'd sure hate to dangle with him. You really Lou Medellin, mister? I seen you right at the start, Medellin. That day at La Hunter. You sure built yourself a reputation since then. Oh, yeah, I've heard talk about you. <laughs> you don't look like a gunman, though, nor act like one neither. Well, they always said he was real soft-talking and polite-like. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm proud to know you, Medellin. Uh, my name is Casey. How do you do, Mr. Casey? <laughs> Mr. Casey. Imagine Lou Medellin calling me Mr. Casey. Say, I, I sure would like to buy you a drink. No, wait a minute, Casey. I sort of owe this man an apology. The drinks will be on the house, okay? Where? Well, that's kind of you, bartender. Sure, sure. I just want you to feel welcome here, anytime. Uh, Mr. Medell, uh, how come you're wearing your gun in the holster now? I always heard you carried it loose in your belt. I can handle it both ways. Yeah. Maybe you thought people wouldn't recognize you so fast wearing it different. It, it kind of marks a man right off carrying his gun in his belt. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it does. Say, I, 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 I'm sure proud to know you. I never got real acquainted with a, a man of your breed before. My pleasure. My, you sure are polite, Mr. Medellin. No need to be otherwise, I figure. Well, one thing, you make a lot of friends mighty fast. But then I guess that's easy for a man like you. <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes it is. Well, let's uh, move over to the table, gentlemen. We'll have our beer there. Uh, Sam. Sam, Mr. Medellin wants the drinks brought to a table. You bet. Be right there. <laughs> Dillon? Mr. Dillon! Yeah, what is it, Chester? Say, I've been looking all over for you. Oh, trouble? No, sir, but there sure could be. Did you ever hear of Lou Medellin? Is he in town? Yes, sir, he was right in the Alifaganza there about an hour ago. I had a beer with him. Well, what's he doing in Dodge? Did you find that out? Well, he didn't say, Mr. Dillon, but he is about the nicest, politest fellow you ever met. All I've heard about him is he started killing people a few months ago up in Colorado Territory. Yes, sir. He's a gunman, all right. Casey saw him in a fight in La Hunter. He's with him right now. Casey's a fool, Chester. Don't you be. No, sir. It's just that I never met nobody like him. Oh, he's so quiet and easygoing. Sure. I think I'll have a talk with him, Chester. Come on. Say, you think he's here looking for trouble, Mr. Dillon? Man like that's always looking for trouble. Well, yes, sir, I guess that's true, all right. That's him. Sitting right over there with Casey. I've got three more days here in town. And before I quit La Hunt, I said to him, I want to know sure that... He... <laughs> Hello there, Marshal. I guess Chester told you who this is, huh? This here's Lou Medellin, Marshal. Hello, Medellin. Greatest gunman in Colorado Territory since Clay Allison went to New Mexico. Yeah. I've heard a little about you, Medellin. Pretty new at this game, aren't you? Yes, sir. Pretty new. Casey didn't mention it, but my name's Dillon. I'm a U.S. Marshal. I represent the law in Dodge. Glad to know you, Marshal Dillon. Are you planning to stay here long? Well, I don't make plans much, Marshal. I thought maybe you were here for some reason. Oh, no. No reason. None I can think of, anyway. 
I see. Yeah, I'd hate to be in your shoes if you tried to run Lou Medellin out of Dodge, Marshal. I told Chester that you're a fool, Casey. Now I'm telling you. Medellin's a, a friend of mine. You better talk easy to uh, me. Oh, shut up, Casey. Medellin, this is just what I came to tell you. Trouble breeds around a man like you. Somehow it can't be helped. And I'm hired to keep trouble out of Dodge. Don't worry about me, Marshal. I'm not worried about you. Well, no, sir. Ain't nobody going to take Lou Medellin. Yes, there is. No matter how good he is, somebody will kill him one day. It always happens sooner or later. You may be, Marshal? Maybe. If he starts any trouble. There's nothing to worry about, Marshal. Don't you tell him a man like you ain't afraid of him, Medellin? Tell him. I think he knows that. Don't you, Marshal? I'm an old hand at this game, Medellin. You're new. But if you live long enough, you'll find out that being afraid isn't what counts. No? Well, what does? Worrying about it. The way you're worrying right now. I have a feeling you've been playing lucky so far, Medellin. But don't count on it lasting. I know what I'm doing, Marshal. What are you doing in Dodge, Medellin? I wanted to see the town. Isn't that all right? Yeah, that's all right. But the first sign of trouble and you're through here. Sure, Marshal. Sure. family's getting weary of the same old breakfast cereal every morning, time to retire it and introduce them to New Sugar Crinkles. Say, New Sugar Crinkles is the sugar rice treat that's just right sweet. And I'm here to tell you, sugar crinkles make breakfast more fun than a circus. Golden crisp nuggets of sugar-coated rice and every nugget in your breakfast bowl just right sweet. Forget your experience with sugar-coated cereals that seem too sweet and with others that don't seem sweet enough. Treat yourself and your favorite family to new sugar crinkles at breakfast time and snack time, too. For your breakfast or a snack, you love sugar crinkles. Sugar crinkles can't be big. Sugar rice treat that's just right sweet. With milk for the breakfast joy. As a snack from the pack, oh boy! Can't be beat, just right sweet, sugar crinkles, good to eat. Now back to I'd seen a lot of gunmen and killers in my time, and some of them were mighty peculiar people. But the strangest I'd ever run across was Blue Medellin. It wasn't his quiet, polite manner that bothered me, but the feeling I got that he wasn't very sure of himself or of what he was doing. I didn't see him again that day or the next until along toward evening. I was sitting in Doc's office when Chester came up and told me he'd heard Ab Fisher was in town. I'd known Fisher some years back, and I had heard a lot about him since. So I set out at once to find him. Having one gunman around was bad enough, but having two meant certain trouble. You going to look in the Texas Trail, Mr. Dillon? I might as well try it first. It's closer. Yes, sir. Oh, why does everything have to happen at once? Uh, nothing's happened yet, Chester. See him? No. Over oh, well, there's Lou McDullin over there. Well, he's sitting with Miss Kitty, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Uh, stay here, Chester, and keep your eyes open, huh? All right, sir. Kitty, I'll tell you what I'll... Oh, hello, Master. Hello, Kitty. 
Uh, Dolan? Pull up a chair, Marshal. Oh, thank you. You look worried about something, Matt. Maybe it's because I'm sitting with his girl. You're sitting with me because you got the price of a drink, mister. That's not very nice of you, Kitty. Never mind, Madellan. Tell me, do you know Ab Fisher? Ab Fisher? No, I don't, Marshal. Ever heard of him? Never even heard of him. Good. So long. Goodbye. He's sure worried about something. I know he is. Ah, don't pay any attention to him, Kitty. Have another drink? Where'd you get all the money? You didn't have much last night. Casey over there lent me some. Till mine gets here. I've heard that story before, too. <laughs> <laughs> Who's this? Never saw him before. So you're Lou Madellan. Who are you? Ab Fisher. Oh, I'm beginning to understand this. You gentlemen will excuse me. What do you want, Fisher? Told me you were in town. Thought I'd like to meet you. Oh. Well, I'm glad to know you. I heard about you in Denver. Oh, sure, sure. They say you're pretty fast. Yeah, I guess I am. Madellan, it makes me uncomfortable to be around a man who thinks he's better than I am. Huh. Don't feel that way. Here, I'll buy you a drink. Put your money on the table. All right. There it is. And there's mine. I... I don't understand. One of us gets four drinks. The one that lives. What? Drama, Dylan. Go on, draw. No, no, wait. Listen, and I will. You, you killed him. You killed Lou Madellan. He ain't dead yet. But he didn't even draw. He never even tried. He had his chance. If he lives, I'll give him another one. Anytime. Right now, I'm going to have me four quick drinks. Hold it, Ab. Matt Dillon. Well, so it is. Don't try anything. Why should I, Matt? You're under arrest, Ab. What for? For killing Lou Madellan. They say you drew first. He was kind of pokey about it, and I had to. But you can't arrest me, Matt. It's murder, Ab. Guess you haven't heard. Lou Madellan's got a price on his head. He's wanted in Denver for shooting a few citizens while he was robbing a bank. Dead or alive, Matt. I'll get $1,000 for this. Is that true? Yeah, it's true. You're no good anymore, Ab, but at least you never tried to lie your way out of anything I know of. If it wasn't true, Matt, I'd have tried to shoot you. I'll telegraph about it. But meanwhile, you'll have to sleep in jail. Sure, Matt. Save me the price of a room. Oh, well, Casey, don't stand there. Get Madellan over to Doc's. <laughs> finally answered your telegraph, and Ab Fisher's right. $1,000 for Luma Dillon, dead or alive, and it's signed by the sheriff up in Denver. Will I tell Fisher about it? Uh, no, let him wait a while. He isn't worried anyway. I'm going to go up to Doc's and see if Madellan's still alive. Yes, sir. alive, Matt, but not for long. Can he talk? Oh, he can talk all right, but when he goes, he'll go fast. There's nothing more I can do for him. 
Where have you got him in the back room? I thought he'd be quieter there. Come in with me, Doctor. Sure, man. Sure. Marshal Dillon's here, Medellin. Hello, Marshal. How you feeling, Medellin? Poorly. I ain't gonna make it, Marshal. That fella shot me up bad. Yeah. Uh, Medellin, I want to ask you something about last night. Oh. Then you find out. No, I haven't found out, but maybe you'll tell me. Why didn't you draw on Ab Fisher? I... I was too scared, like you said. I tried to tell him about everything, but he shot me before I could talk. And that doesn't make sense. How could you have killed all the men they say you have acting the way you do? Marshal, I never killed a man in my life. What? No, sir. I'm just a poor cowboy. I got fired my last job. And I thought maybe I'd find something to do around here. What are you talking about? It's the truth. I ran into them fellas at the bar. They thought I was a big gun. And they gave me a lot of respect, Marshal. I never had no respect before. From nobody. Oh. Well, uh... What is your name? Coots. Dubby Coots. Uh, Dubby Coots. Well, I thought something was wrong. Guess I... I look like that Lou Medellin, don't I? Are you fool Casey anyway? <laughs> But I sure couldn't act like them. <laughs> I'm in bad shape, Marshal. I'm sorry, Coates. It's all right. First time in my life I got me respect. <laughs> but I first. <laughs> He's dead, Matt. Dubby Kutza. Poor devil. Yes, it's, uh, it's kind of sad, Matt. Yeah. It's going to be kind of sad for Ab Fisher, too. Now i got to go tell him that he killed an innocent man. And he'll probably hang for it. He's going to be mighty disappointed. Just a moment, we'll tell you about next week's adventure on Gunsmoke. If you want to be a real good scout, Mom, tell you what to do. See that your whole tribe sits down to post toasties for breakfast in the morning. What a way to start the day for every big and little Indian in your wigwam. You see, post toasties are heap good cornflakes. Spankin' fresh, crisp, with that sweet kernel corn flavor toasted right in. It's a feather in your cap to serve them. Sure, because Post Toasties are not only the best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it, Post Toasties are the best thing that ever happened to breakfast. And say, if you want to make a good thing even better, add your favorite fruit to that bowl full of Post Toasties, sugar, and milk. Mmm, it's mighty delicious nourishment. Get Post Toasties, the heap good cornflakes... Next time you shop. Gunsmoke on 
to the direction of Norman MacDonald stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Vic Perrin, Lauren Stobkin, Harry Bartell, and Herb Ellis. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Ken Peters speaking. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Listen next week at this time when Gunsmoke will be brought to you by Post Toasties, the heat good.